This is um, Blender, uh, Intro to Materials. Now we talked about materials in uh, previous demos, but um, we'll just uh, basically review and start from the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to grab the ceiling. I'm going to come in and add a material. Uh, so I just hit the plus, add a new material, click it, and rename it ceiling. Uh, I keep it white, and I'll crank the intensity all the ways up. Um, I usually just keep this up at one. You don't. Uh, the only time you really, if not, uh, basically, I, I prefer adjusting the color and the value of the color than um, actually messing around with the intensity. And in other 3D programs, you're not going to see this. And then the specularity, we'll dial it all the ways down and turn it off. You can see there's no sheen. Also, if you look at the image right around here, you'll see if I increase it, there's a little bit of a highlight right up there, and that goes away. So if we render this out, you're not going to really see much of a difference, but it's actually there. Uh, let's go down and grab the walls. Walls are down at the bottom. Once again, we want to add something new. I'm going to rename this walls. Make it green. And the default's RGB. I like to use the HSV, which is U saturation and value. I find this personally easier to use. Um, you can dial around the different color by adjusting the U. You can increase and decrease the saturation, and then you can increase and decrease the value as well. So it's a pretty handy and quick way, in my opinion, to dial different um, digital colors. Um, as opposed to trying to mess around with the RGB or some of the other ones. So uh, I add that. Now the other thing is, is there's a sheen here. And usually, and you can see the specular highlight being cast by the key light right there. Uh, usually we don't have that with um, wall paint, or if we do, it's very, very minimal. So if we knock the intensity down, that's one way that we can make it more subtle. The other way to do it is to crank the hardness down, and you'll see what that does is it spreads out the specular highlights so it's bigger. So there is a sheen, but it's much more general. So I usually kind of use the two back and forth to get something that kind of has a little bit of sheen, but not too much. Um, and that just kind of helps to make it look a little bit more um, realistic. So let's uh, zoom in and look at the pencil. And what we're going to do with the pencil, let me just do a straight render. Now, if I do a render right now, we see the whole scene. So when you're in camera perspective, if you hit Control and B at the same time, you can draw out a border. And now if I hit uh, F12 or hit Render, now I get this little area. Now, the problem is you can see that's pretty small. If I go into the uh, render settings, I can, right now there's a border, which is what I created. So if you want to get rid of this, you just toggle it off. But there's also a crop. So we're going to add the crop, and now if I render, now it crops the image. And the other thing is, this is at 50% resolution. I'm going to knock it up to 100% and render it out, and hopefully that will make it a little easier for us to see. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come up to the outliner and switch it over to the UV image editor, which is what this becomes. And now if I escape out, so it's closed, so this is in the 3D view, and now that image editor, and I go to render, now it brings up this preview up here. So this is kind of a handy way that you can just basically hit F12, and you get constant updates, so you can work between the two. Uh, so it's kind of handy for workflow. So let's start with the body. I'm going to go in, uh, create a new material for that, and pencil body. And you want to make sure your names kind of make sense. You just don't want material one, material two, etc. Um, especially if you come back to this file in the future. Uh, knock the intensity all the way up. The Lambert shader is fine. Uh, what I'm going to do, you could play around with the specularity a lot. Uh, these pencil paints usually they gop a lot on, so it has pretty high specularity. Uh, and we can knock it down a little to spread it out. And let's render that out. And now we have our yellow paint. Let's move on to the tip. Now the tip is wood, and it does have a subtle grain if you look at it in a real pencil that uses wood. But uh, we haven't done textures yet, so you're just going to have to approximate whatever that color is. So I will do um, pencil wood, and I will change this to a tan. It's a little too saturated for my taste. Knock it down, knock the value down, try to get kind of a tannish color. 
Um, and the big thing that's glaringly off on this, uh, pull the intensity up, is, is basically the specularity. Um, wood almost has almost none, or there's a very, very, depending on the quality of your pencil sharpener, once again, the hardness is pretty spread out on it. So um, this will kind of help it read a little bit more. So there's a little bit of a sheen, but not much. You can see there's just a little bit right there. Um, and now let's uh, grab the tip and uh, add a new one for that, uh, pencil tip. And this one we're going to come in and we're going to do a charcoal. And um, you don't want to do it black. If you do, the only reason you see this is because of specular highlights, so you never want to do black. Uh, even if you want black, you usually want to put it like 75%, so I'm trying to do a, a gray at this point. Uh, keeping the shader and everything's fine, I'll uh, play around with the specular highlight. Um, there's some other ones. I'm just going to switch this over to Blinn. It's not, uh, it's more for um, things that aren't as hard surface. Uh, and it just has different types of properties and controls. And the best way to figure this out is to play around with it. You can also go on to Blender's uh, site. If you go Help Manual, there's actually a breakdown that explains what these different, they call them shaders are. Uh, which is basically controlling how the, the the highlight is being rendered, and this is how the actual base color is being rendered. And there's some different ones. Uh, there's not really major difference. Uh, the one to be aware of is this is for doing uh, uh, cell shaded uh, cartoons, so obviously we don't want to use that one. So I'm going to uh, do the same thing again, once again, bringing down the hardness to really spread out the um, the image, and then increasing it. Um, so that we kind of get that graphite type uh, look. So uh, let's render this out again, see what we got. Okay, so now we have that. And um, now we'll come in and we'll grab the, uh, the pencil uh, um, eraser. So we'll go in and we'll add that one and that we're going to do kind of a salmon color. Uh, that's probably a little too... Let's move this a little bit into the red spectrum. Um, and then, uh, once again, put the intensity always up. Now, Lambert's just kind of a basic smooth shader for things that look realistic. And that, I don't know if you notice, it looks a little fake. And some of that's a specular highlight. But there's um, some other ones. Fresnel's for glass. Uh, this one's for velvet and kind of very soft surfaces uh, tune. This is for cell shading. We're not going to be using that. And then Ornay or Blinn is for basically surfaces that aren't perfectly smooth. Um, it adds a very subtle blotch called a roughness. So we're just going to use the default, but what it'll do is that um, if you look at the eraser, it's not completely um, smooth and consistent. You could also, uh, this is a good thing to put on wood as well. And then the specularity on this is going to be um, pretty uh, um, washed out. So I'm going to go back to the blend and I'm going to knock my intensity in half. And then I'm going to decrease the hardness once again to probably something around, let's go around 10. There we go. So it's there. It's pretty subtle, but uh, we have it. Um, so now we have our specular highlight there. Uh, next thing we're going to do is the clamp. And what I'm going to do with the uh, pencil clamp is I'm going to show you basically what I recommend not doing with uh, metal. Uh, metal is really kind of tricky. Fortunately, uh, there's ray trace materials where you can do real-time reflection, but uh, if you're in a bind or in some programs, they have this basic reflection and it looks uh, really fake. Uh, so we can kind of simulate this and try to do um, a chrome type color. So we'll come in and uh, pencil uh, clamp and I'm going to change this over to a Fresnel and you can see it has very different kind of properties different types of controls and I'm going to give this a little bit of a blue tint uh, just to kind of push it into metal and let's do some adjustment in this so the intensity I'm going to knock down really low and the uh, Fresnel I'm going to knock up and knock it up pretty considerably to 3.5 and we will leave the increase the factor as well and once we kind of combine them you see we're starting to get some weird optical phenomena that's happening that's kind of implying like a, um, a some type of reflection even though there's no reflection you can kind of see it here as well in the, the, the uh, 
OpenGL preview. And then uh, the other thing is to basically uh, come in and let's play around with another uh, specular highlight. Once again, this is going to be pretty subtle. We'll go to this one, and this one makes it much, much sharper. Uh, this is kind of a good uh, all-around one. We're going to knock the intensity down to pretty low, and then we're going to um, basically play around with the slope and increase it and make it a little bit bigger. And we'll just kind of keep this at this point. So let's uh, render and see what update we have at this point. So now we have this. So it kind of looks like metal, but it's, uh, in my opinion, it's, it's not a very good solution. And later we'll look at other ones, but I just kind of wanted to show you kind of what bad metal can look like to see so have awareness of it. Okay, so we're done with the pencil, so let's uh, zoom out. And we'll go in and once again, Control and B. And I'm going to select the book now. So let's just render the book out and get that into the image. Um, this is pretty uh, sim simplistic. Uh, we will create a new material for the book. And we'll do the cover first, book cover. And I'm going to try to do it kind of like a, um, a navy, almost like a leather. Knock the saturation down, knock the color down. Um, try to get a little bit more blue. Okay, so we have basic uh, blue cover. I'm going to add the orange or blend because I don't want it to be perfectly even. I'm going to knock the intensity all the way up. And I could play around with the roughness. If I want to make it look like it's a little bit more worn, I can increase the roughness and you can keep on going up and adjusting that um, as desired. I'm going to use the, the blend because I like to have a highlight, but I want it to be pretty subtle. So I'm going to add the blend and I'm going to knock, uh, keep the intensity um, down to 0.1, so it's pretty low. And then the hardness, I'm going to do the same thing I've done before, like with the eraser and stuff, and knock it down to something around like 15. So there's a little bit of a highlight, not much, but it's there. And let's render this out, and now you see we're starting to get um, some detail. It's, it's pretty basic, but uh, once we go and add some uh, book cover and different uh, elements to it, it'll start to look a little bit more realistic. So let's select the pages, uh, book pages. This I'm going to add just a little bit of what I would consider dirt, uh, just so it's not perfectly white. Uh, once again, if we don't have full illumination, you're not going to see it. And switch this over to ordinary blend, so it has a little bit of variety. And then the pages have a little bit of specularity, but once again, it's uh, pretty uh, diffused and subtle, so we'll use the same blend technique that we've been using uh, and knock down the hardness and kind of get this subtle washed out specular highlight. And it's going to be a little hard to see because the, um, uh, the uh, fill light doesn't have the specularity on, um, which uh, would be another way to look at this. So uh, we have that done, and now we can kind of zoom out. And if I want to get rid of the border and do the entire thing, I can go and I can just toggle off crop and border. And I'm going to switch this back to outliner um, for the time being. No, I'll leave it like this. So if we go to render image, OK, so you can see it much, much bigger, a little harder to see, but we can kind of go in. And what we want to do at this time is we want to play around with the table surface. So I kind of select the, the table, and we'll call this wood. And next demo, when we're doing textures, we'll do more work with wood. But for the time being, I'm just going to try to make this look like it's uh, kind of almost like a mahogany. Uh, let's see, we need to knock down the value. Uh, probably add a little bit more red to it. Um, okay. Increase the saturation, knock down the volume. Okay, there we go. And get something like that. The uh, specularity probably isn't that uh, bad. Uh, we could try to knock it down. It depends whether or not it's finished wood or not. If you go all the way down, it's going to be a very kind of rough wood. And then gradually, it depends how much polish you actually have for a smooth surface. And then the same thing with the hardness of kind of just spreading it out. Um, so it's not a completely tight, uh, you can see, a specular highlight. And the other thing I'm going to add, and this will be kind of uh, a new thing to look at, is 